Laramie. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. You hear anything now, Gorse? A lot of little sounds, but not the moaning. Might be he's dead, Captain. Might be. This is where his horse came out, this clearing. He shouldn't be much further in, dead or not. You a hand to see in the dark, are you? Not much, no. I can always light this lantern, you know. You want to be seen, do you? Well, if he's dead, he won't see no lantern. If he isn't? I still can't see in the... How's your hearing in the dark? I heard that all right. Just ahead, Ghost. You can light your lantern now. Hold it closer. Toward his face. He looks kind of young, Captain. Kind of wild, too. He's full of pain and scared. Do you speak the tongue of white man? I speak. Our camp is back by the river. We'll carry you there. You... you kill? No. Got a canteen, Gorse? Yes, Captain. Give him a drink. You mind the lantern? I'll mind it. Mm. Mm. Can you lift your head up to it? Oh, no, no drink. What's the matter with you? You shot up for fair. You must be burning inside. You drink some of it, Gorse. Oh. oh yeah. You see, engine, good water. Now you drink. No. No drink. Looks like his right leg, Gorse. A couple nicks across his belly. What kind of show I got to put on to make him drink? Well, drink some more. Captain... I swilled down three cups of coffee before he come riding through the camp. I got no Another sense. swallow or two. Now, go ahead. Well. Now then, Engine, you got to make up your mind. Either it's good water or I got a taste for drinking poison. Now, which will it be? Well, right, man, you drink. I'm not thirsty. You need a drink, take it. If you don't, leave it be. You drink... You born contrary, or you just come along that way? Good one. Good. Didn't I tell you? What's your name? Charlie. Charlie? Fine. Charlie, you got one good leg. We'll, we'll help you up on it, Gorse. Oh! What kind of engine name is Charlie? Good American name. Charlie. You can't argue that with him, Gorse. Charlie. Come on. We can make camp from here. He's sleeping, Captain. He's bound to. He lost a lot of blood. Did you watch him eat? He'll gain back his strength in no time. Did he do any talking? Mostly he ate. And smile. Kept asking everyone to call him Charlie. Good American name, Charlie. What do you think about him, Captain? Well, there's not much to think about him, Mr. Cybertz. Takes pain well, he smiles, he eats a lot. I mean, the way he rode right up to our camp alone. Rode right past the pickets without any fear at all, apparently. And got shot for his trouble. Yes, wouldn't you think he'd expect that, Captain? I'd expect it. You would. Maybe Charlie's different. Tinkham and Prebos, they both swear he made no move to fire back, just rode like the devil for the woods. You redoubled the pickets, Mr. Sabitz? Yes, sir, I did. I guess you think maybe Charlie wasn't alone? I told you there's not much to think about Charlie right now. 
If he wanted more than food and a good drink of water, he hasn't said. I can't take the chance he's alone. The tourniquet stopped the bleeding. Then maybe we'll know more about Charlie tomorrow. You gonna cut the bullet out tomorrow, Captain? I'm gonna cut at least three of them out. Three, Captain? But Tinkerman Prevost said that... Charlie was wounded before he got here, Mr. Seibertz. You come ask question, Captain? How do you feel this morning, Charlie? Charlie, feel fine. Leg feel bad. Yeah, I'll bet it does. All right, if I look at it? You look. Mm. Charlie, do you drink whiskey? Whiskey? Know what it is? Like water? Like fire water. Whiskey like fire water? Just like it. You drink fire water? Mm, burn. From mouth all down to belly. Make cough, make sick, make bad head. That's it. I like. You got three, maybe four bullets in that leg. If I don't cut them out, you'll die, Charlie. If I do, it'll hurt. Bad. You want whiskey for the hurt, you can have it. Leg very bad. Yeah, it is. Here's the water you asked for, Captain. Brought it right from the fire. Thanks, Gorse. You gonna bind him fast, or you want me to hold him? And that's up to Charlie. You bring whiskey. Now, where am I gonna get whiskey? Leg very bad. Over there, Gorse, in my bedroll. Yes, sir. I suppose I gotta take a couple of gulps before you figure it's safe to drink, Engine. You got bad leg? Only bad thing I got's my temper. Give Charlie whiskey. Charlie take for pain. One thing, he ain't no dumb engine. Go on, Charlie, drink it down. <laughs> Let me know when the leg doesn't hurt anymore. Oh. Uh, <coughs> White Captain, good friend, bring Charlie whiskey. Mark the day, Charlie. It's the last whiskey you'll get from this white man. I'll need more boiling water, Gorse. Mess sergeant's got another pot going. <coughs> Oh, very good to have leg very bad. Never mind the talk, just drink. Mm. You sure ain't going to need no setting on, Captain. Lapping it down at that rate, he'll be helpless inside of five minutes. I'm counting on that, boys. Let's go outside, leave him be. I sure never seen the like of him. He's not cut on any pattern I know either. Ooh. That leg's bad just overnight. It's real bad. He say who shot him before we did? There's a long list of things he's not said. Time for talk will come later. Well, that's a quart of whiskey, Captain. Oh! It was a quart of whiskey, Gorse. Well, you, uh, you ready for surgery? You got a mind for it, sir? I got a mind, but not much stomach for it. Well, let's get it over with, Gorse. The runner's still around, Mr. Sabitz? Yes, sir. He's, uh, he's having something to eat, Captain. Well, when he's through that, he gets his rest. He was asking about a fresh horse, sir. He won't need one. There's no reply to this message. Time he's ready to move again, both him and his horse will be rested. Do we have new orders, sir? Major Daggett will be here tomorrow with a platoon from G Company. We're to wait for the rendezvous. Major Daggett is... What... The message says to keep Pete Hazen here till the Major arrives. Yes, and I'd do that if I'd laid an eye on Pete in a month. I thought he was scouting up in the Bighorn country. Last I heard, he was. Guess the Major's counting on reports from that area. 
Maybe we'll be moving up that way. Are they talking about Charlie, Captain? We're not going to find out sitting in a tent, Mr. Sibert. That crazy fool. Sergeant! Yes, sir. Well, it happened too quick, Captain. I couldn't stop him. The man can't walk yet. How could it happen too quick? First I saw him, he'd crawled most down to the creek. His horse was tethered down there with the others, and you saw the rest of it. He, he, he just propelled himself up on that horse. And from the off side, the right side. The Indians don't know any better, and neither do their horses. They always mount on the right side. You want me to go after him, Captain? Uh, no need. He's coming back. What? I swear, Captain, he's putting on a show for us. Yeah, they ride all over a horse. On his neck, his sides, under his belly. <laughs> Either of you feel like much of a horseman now? With one bad leg. You don't think he got hold of another jug of whiskey, sir? I'll break the man who gave it to him if he did. Captain, I guess he's played himself out. Charlie, good rider, yes? Charlie, stupid fool. Leg very bad. White captain, sorry leg very bad. Your leg's a sieve. But it's your leg. You can break it off and throw it away if you're of a mind. Leg very bad, good friend. Bring Charlie whiskey. I told you, Charlie, that's the last whiskey you'd get from me. Charlie ride very good. Charlie show white man, Indian trick. Uh-uh, no whiskey. No whiskey. You, other man, you have whiskey. Not me, Charlie. Yeah, and don't look at me with your sore leg. I'll give you nothing. Poor Charlie, hurt very bad. Slide off that pony. I want to talk to you. Oh, leg so bad. Get off. Oh. Mind his horse, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Mr. Seibert, see the camp's made ready for Major Daggett's arrival? Yes, sir. You were kicking that bad leg around real free. Can you bear weight on it as far as my tent? Whiskey in tent? You want two bad legs? Charlie, walk. Here, I'll help you. There now. Let me see that leg. Charlie do bad thing to ride? It should have killed you. But you're such a contrary cuss. It looks fine, Charlie. It's got no right to, but your leg looks fine. Ooh. Charlie, who shot you? Before we did. Hmm. White settler, he shoot two, three times. Why? Oh, Charlie try steal horses. You ought to be shot for that. You ever lived on a reservation? One time, short time. Charlie not like reservation. Nothing can do. Charlie like steal horses. You steal horses all alone, do you? Sometime alone. Sometime with Cheyenne Brave. Charlie find horses. Tell others. They come, we steal. That makes you a Cheyenne scout, then? Charlie like steal horses. Also, hunt. You're not Cheyenne, Charlie. White captain can tell Charlie not Cheyenne? Well, you look more like a crow to me. Yes, crow. <laughs> Charlie little bear. All blood, crow. Sioux, Cheyenne, Rappaho, all drive crow people from land of father, from Bighorn. Charlie liked Bighorn. Charlie lived there. Even with Cheyenne. There's no Cheyenne reservation in the Bighorn? No reservation. Just Cheyenne Brave and Charlie. Like steal horses. Hunt. You like to kill white men? Charlie not kill white man. Not ever kill white man. Charlie friend. Got name from white man. What white man? Many years, many years, when Charlie live with own people, white man come for hunt, furs. Teach Charlie speak tongue of white man. Then he die. Charlie take name of friend. Mm-hmm. You let Charlie go back, Bighorn. Hunt. Steal horses. 
If you stole horses, you broke the law. You put Charlie reservation? I might. Might put you in jail, too. I might do almost anything with you, Charlie. Does that give you whiskey? Now, the last word we had from Hazen, the Bighorn, was as peaceful as Sunday church. Now, all through these valleys here, settlers are complaining of increasing Indian raids. For horses, Major? For horses, until the last few days. Runners are reporting a band of marauding Cheyenne. Burning, massacring as they go. Through here, you say? Long stinking water? That's the Shoshone River, Captain. The Indians call it stinking water. Well, we're going there. Doesn't much matter what the Indians call it. Might matter, Major. How's that? We can't wait for Pete Hazen. If there's a Cheyenne camp in the Bighorn, we'll need a scout to find it. That's right. Charlie Little Bear's an Indian. He can't pick a trail to the Shoshone River. But he'll sure know one to stinking water. From what you've said, this must be his band of Cheyenne who's responsible for the killing along the, uh, stinking water. He's not about to lead you against his friends. I mean, Charlie's a crow. I've never heard a crow boast about his scalps. You're saying, then, that you trust Charlie? I'm counting on him being a crow, that's all, Major. Just look at that Charlie little bear, Captain. Smiling, riding easy. You think he was out on a happy hunting party? I'm looking at him. You call him a scout? I could have got us this far by myself. You know where the Cheyenne camp is, Gorse? No, sir. Well, I don't either, but Charlie does. I'm hoping he'll lead us there. Just because you fixed his leg, Captain? Just because Charlie doesn't like killing, Sergeant. Charlie? Yes, Captain. You saw the last two ranches, Charlie. Fired, burned to the ground, stock run off. I saw no killing. No body of white man, like you said, Captain. This is your country, though, Charlie. This is the work of your Cheyenne friends, isn't it? Charlie see many Indian sign. Yes, yeah, Cheyenne. But no killing. There's another ranch ahead, Charlie. Oh, uh, how's your leg holding up? Oh, good. White Captain fixed leg very good. Charlie, not forget. Patrol! Halt! Dismount. Search the premises. Dismount. Sergeant... Report anything you can find to me. Anything. Yes, sir. Blood here, Captain. Dry blood. Marked the ground. A trail of it. Leads up to the cabin. Or what's left of it, anyway. And many pony. Cheyenne pony. You been here before, Charlie? Not here. Hmm. Old man live here. Not many horses. Charlie likes steal many horses. Was, was that the old man? Or can you tell? Hard to tell about old man. Too much head gone. Well, we can't do much for him now, but bury him. He was old man. Like white friend who gave Charlie name. Charlie, friend, die in peace. Captain Quince, out here, sir. You find something, Gorse? Yeah. This bundle of stuff on the far side of the cabin. You can 
funny collection, Captain. Mm. Relics. Four arrows. This thing, gorse made of skin and buffalo hair. Two arrow for hunting, two for war. This marking, the hat of skin and hair, this all sacred to Cheyenne. There's an old man dead inside the cabin, Sergeant. All in a burial detail. Yes, sir. You take it. You sing death song for old man, Captain? We'll just bury him, Charlie. And hope he's found his peace. This day is old. Sun dies, too. Yeah. We'll be making camp soon. Charlie, not like killing. With tomorrow's sun, Charlie lead you to Cheyenne Camp. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin as Charlie, Jack Moyles as Major Daggett, and Harry Bartell as Lieutenant Seibertz. Company, tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. With the Far East as a backdrop, and with intrepid correspondent O'Hara right in the foreground, you're sure to have an exciting adventure every Monday night right here at the Star's Address. If you like your mystery on the fast-moving side, be sure you're listening to CBS Radio each Monday evening when another thrill-packed episode of O'Hara comes your way on most of these same stations. 